I'm Dwight Johnson, Sergeant for the Umatilla County Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue Unit. In this video, we're going to be talking about latitude and longitude. In search and rescue, being able to locate positions on the ground is a mission critical component of just about any response. There are several systems for determining locations during SAR missions a searcher may encounter and with which all searchers should be familiar. Currently, the National Grid System, also known as the Military Grid Reference System, is our primary system for SAR and disaster response, as mandated by FEMA. The Universal Transverse Mercator System, known by its acronym UTM, is also widely used. For missions occurring on national forests or BLM land, searchers may encounter the Legal Description System. All of these systems are based on the Geographic Coordinate System, commonly called Latitude and Longitude. Virtually all the systems used by SAR are based on a coordinate system. A coordinate system relies on the crossing of two perpendicular lines, also known as an XY axis system, to pinpoint a location on the Earth. In reality, the only true coordinate system for the four previously mentioned is the geographic coordinate system. That is because this system reduces location to the intersection of two lines, a mathematical point. The other systems reduce location to an area. The area is small enough that in the real world of search and rescue incidents, the system is more than adequate for operational success. The geographic coordinate system is based upon the fact that the Earth is basically a sphere. The system establishes two sets of lines drawn around the sphere that are perpendicular to each other. These lines end up being circular in shape and are superimposed upon the Earth. One of the unique things about the system that is different from all other ones used by SAR is that it retains its spherical shape, while the other systems basically take on the spheroid shape of the Earth and then try and flatten it out. Following ancient convention that goes back before the Christian era, circles are still divided into 360 degrees. Each degree is divided into 60 segments called minutes. Each minute is also divided into 60 segments called seconds. Therefore, each degree contains 3,600 seconds. This concept is used in lines of latitude and longitude, which of course are circular in reality. When superimposed upon the Earth, the system provides a relatively high degree of precision. Lines of latitude run perpendicular to the Earth's axis and measure how far north and south you are from the equator, the line around the middle of the Earth. Lines of latitude lie parallel to each other. Notice as you go north and south from the equator, these circles get smaller. But they are always the same distance from each other. Lines of latitude are located by going from 0 degrees to 90 degrees from the equator to the poles. Lines of latitude are denoted as being either north or south of the equator depending on what direction they lie. So all latitudes for SAR in the United States will be north. As mentioned earlier, since lines of latitude run parallel to each other, degrees of latitude are always pretty much the same length no matter where they are on the Earth. In fact, the nautical mile is based upon this concept. A nautical mile is one minute of latitude. Lines of longitude run north and south and measure how far east or west a location is from an arbitrary line of longitude called the prime meridian, which is given the location of zero degrees. Notice that lines of longitude are all the same size, but their distance apart decreases the farther north you get. Lines of longitude converge at the north and south pole. This means that lines of longitude are always running in a true north-south orientation. This is important for SAR as lines of longitude are the only reliable true north system we use. All other systems often deviate slightly from using true north-south lines. 
Another property of longitude that is important to remember is that because these lines converge to a point at each pole, degrees of longitude vary in length depending on their position on the globe. The farther from the equator, the smaller the distance. Notice that while east-west distances are measured from the prime meridian, or zero degrees longitude, they do not start clockwise and run a full 360 degrees and on a, as, a, as on a circle or compass rose. Instead, they run from 0 to 180 going east of the prime meridian and 0 to 180 going west of the prime meridian. Here's a view of the prime meridian and the 180th meridian looking down from the North Pole. Note that the prime meridian is located in Greenwich, England. This was because original nautical charts were produced based upon observations made at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England. Whether measuring east or west from the prime meridian, distances always end at the 180th meridian also known as the International Dateline, halfway around the world from Greenwich. Notice that the dateline does not consistently coincide with the 180th meridian, but deviates in some pretty pronounced areas. Do you know why this might be? The answer lies in the fact that time continually changes as distance is increased east or west of the prime meridian. Consequently, the date actually changes at the 180th meridian. The deviations in this line were made for political and economic reasons to accommodate the countries lying within those locations. For the geographic coordinate system, the 180th line of longitude or 180th meridian is the only line that matters. Putting the geographical coordinate system together results in lines of latitude and longitude displayed as a grid. By convention, we measure up or down from the equator first, and then east or west from the prime meridian. Positions are always reported as latitude first, longitude second. Here is another view of the system. Using it, we can precisely report the position of any location on Earth. Using the system, can you determine the location of Pendleton, Oregon? If you figured 46 degrees north of the equator and 119 degrees west of the prime meridian, you would be in the ballpark. The actual location is 45.67 degrees north of the equator and 118.78 degrees west of the prime meridian, which is a great segue into latitude and longitude position formats. First, let's review. Lines of latitude are divided into degrees, as with a standard circle. Each degree is subdivided into 60 minutes. Each minute is subdivided into 60 seconds. There are three formats in which longitude and latitude are given. They are degrees, minutes, seconds, degrees, decimal minutes, and decimal degrees. We previously used the decimal degrees to locate Pendleton, Oregon. There are also three acceptable formats for indicating cardinal direction from the equator and prime meridian. You can use the cardinal direction N, S, E, E, or W for north, south, east, or west. You can put this cardinal either in front of or behind the latitude and longitude figures. Either is correct. The second method for recording direction from the equator and prime meridian is to use positive and negative numbers. North of the equator and east of the prime meridian are denoted as positive numbers, and conversely, south of the equator and west of the prime meridian are always displayed as negative numbers. Also, by convention, the plus sign is not used on positive numbers, but the negative or minus sign is used for all negative numbers. 
Let's look again at Pendleton, Oregon. The position of Pendleton could be could either be given as north 45.67 degrees, west 118.78 degrees, or alternatively 45.67 degrees north, 118.78 degrees west, or simply 45.67 degrees minus 118.78 degrees. You can see that the last format is briefer than using the cardinal letters. Again, for North America, all latitudes will be positive and all longitudes will be negative. If you hear a positive longitude reading, you will always know that this is a mistake and that likely the numeric is correct, but the minus sign was inadvertently left off. That is what normally happens, but the searcher should always confirm this if possible. With modern GPS units and computers, most of the time you can give any format in the geographical coordinate system and be understood. Not so long ago, degrees and decimal minutes was the preferred format for aircraft. This was because degrees decimal minutes was a location system used in sectionals, the maps that pilots use. The system is still used and most pilots carry old-fashioned paper sectionals with them. At least the smart ones do. It's kind of like a searcher always having a paper map as a backup to their GPS system. You can see this format displayed on the sectional map in Pendleton here. 46 degrees 118 longitude, 46 degrees 119 degree longitude. You will note that there are 60 tick marks between the lines of longitude. They represent minutes. There is not enough room to divide them further. That is why degrees, decimal minutes is the preferred format. Modern digital cockpits, however, make it relatively easy to switch among the various formats as long as it is some form of a geographic coordinate system. It is important to be able to convert the various formats of latitude and longitude on the fly. While there are apps that will do this for you, it is actually a pretty easy process and you can do it with paper and pencil. At least you can easily do it if you were awake during your fourth grade arithmetic class. Remember, there are 60 minutes in a degree and 60 seconds in a minute. To calculate degrees, decimal minutes from degrees, minutes, and seconds, the degree and minute figures remain the same, while the decimal part of the minute is calculated by dividing the number of seconds by 60. Similarly, calculate decimal degrees from degrees decimal minutes by maintaining the degree figure and calculating the decimal part of the degree by dividing the decimal minute by 60. Use this two-step process to convert degrees, minutes, seconds directly to decimal degrees. Let's look at these examples. We're going to start by converting 45 degrees, 12 minutes, 45 seconds to the degree decimal minute format. The degree remains the same at 45 degrees. For the decimal minute, the minute part remains the same at 12, but the decimal part of the minute is the seconds divided by 60, or 12.75. So the answer is 45 degrees, 12.75 minutes. So let's convert that 45, 12 degrees, 0.75 minutes, it should be, to degree decimal format. The degree remains the same as 45 degrees. The, the dot decimal degree is simply calculated by dividing 12.75 by 60, which is 0.2125, and the answer is 45.2125 degrees. To convert the other way, simply reverse the process and multiply the decimal portions by 60. Let's review the formulas above. So going in reverse, to determine degrees decimal minutes from decimal degrees, the degree remains the same, and the decimal minute is calculated by multiplying the decimal degree times 60. And to convert uh, decimal minutes into degrees minutes seconds, the degree remains the same, the minute remains the same, and the seconds are calculated by taking the decimal portion of the minute 
and multiplying by 60. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. First of all, we're going to convert 45.6245 degrees into the degree decimal minute format. The degree remains the same, and the decimal minute is determined by multiplying the 0.6245 times 60 to get 37.47 minutes. The answer then is 45 degrees, 37.47 minutes. In this example, we're going to convert the 45 degrees, 25.48 minutes into degrees, minutes, and seconds. The degree remains 45, the minute remains 24, and the second is calculated by multiplying the decimal portion of the minute, dot 48, times 60, which gives you 29 seconds. The answer is 45 degrees, 24 minutes, 29 seconds. We have been working with coordinates in different formats with varying precision. Coordinate precision simply means how much of an area is encompassed by the coordinate as given. Remember, a geographical coordinate system coordinate theoretically has an infinite degree of precision. Imprecision is normally measured with a plus or minus figure. For example, plus or minus 25 meters would potentially encompass an area 50 meters in diameter. That is, the coordinate could refer to any point in that circle. The more decimal points included in the coordinate, the more precise it is. How precise we measure a coordinate is dictated both by our mission objective and by the device we are using to measure the coordinate. For example, many GPS devices will give a coordinate with more decimals than the device is able to accurately measure, making the degree of precision meaningless. When dealing with coordinates, a good rule of thumb is that for air operations, a coordinate that is approximately plus or minus 50 meters is usually sufficient. And for ground operations, a coordinate that is plus or minus 15 meters is normally sufficient. For example, if air operations directs a fixed-wing aircraft to search an area at a specific coordinate, a 100 meter diameter circle, that is, plus or minus 50 meters, is normally sufficient for operational effectiveness due to aircraft speed and altitude. Let's start with precision of latitude. Remember that for all intents and purposes, degrees of latitude stay constant wherever they are measured on the Earth. One degree of latitude encompasses approximately 111,120 meters. It actually varies a little because the Earth is not an exact sphere, but this variance is inconsequential for SAR purposes. Adding one degree of precision to 111,120 results in an area one-tenth of that, or 11,112 meters. Added a second decimal increases the precision to 1,111 meters, that is, plus or minus 556 meters. A third decimal increases the precision to plus or minus 56 meters, and a fourth decimal increases precision to plus or minus 6 meters. So you can see that for a decimal degree of latitude to be meaningful for SAR, it will usually need to contain either three or four decimals. When using the degree decimal minute format, you can see that one minute of latitude encompasses a distance of about 1,852 meters. So two decimals are normally required for the coordinate to be useful in SAR operations for an approximate precision of plus or minus nine meters. You can also see that whole number seconds should provide sufficient precision for most SAR operations when using degrees, minutes, seconds since this coordinate format has an approximate precision of plus or minus 15 meters. Remember that lines of longitude get closer to each other as you go north or south of the equator and actually converge at the poles. So the areas encompassed by degrees of longitude vary with latitude. Therefore, the number of decimals needed for precision depends on your location. For you who are mathematically inclined, you can calculate this precision by determining the cosine of the degree of latitude in which you are measuring the longitude from a cosine table 
and multiplying that figure by the length of a degree of longitude at the equator, which is about the same as a degree of latitude, that is 111,120 meters. For example, from a cosine table, we know that the cosine of 46 degrees is about 0 0.7. For the latitude of 46 degrees where Pendleton, Oregon lies, a degree of longitude measures an area that is about 0 0.7 time, 111,120 meters, or 77,784 meters. The 0 0.7 figure can be used with the other precision figures calculated for latitude to determine the precision of longitude coordinates in Pendleton's latitude. However, having said all that, for SAR operations it is much easier just to match the number of decimals provided in the latitude figure for the longitude figure. Your precision of longitude will always exceed your operational requirements that way and it keeps the process simple. Why don't you pause the video, find the pencil and paper, and we will do a couple of exercises. Does everybody have their pencil and paper? So using your pencil and paper, you should have no problem converting the location of the Umatilla County Sheriff's Office located in our old friend of Pendleton, displayed on this map in degrees decimal minutes, to decimal degrees. Let's see if you can do that. Pause the video and give it a shot. If you converted it to 45.674, Point eight four three, you would be right on. A matter of note, you might be saying, wait a minute, that latitude is close to the one we gave for Pendleton earlier, but the longitude, that is the minus 118.843, is a lot more than minus 118.78, which we figured out, uh, earlier. What is going on here? Have we made an error? Can anyone explain this? The reason is that Pendleton is spread out in an east-west fashion. The location for Pendleton given earlier is around the courthouse, which is located at the east side of town. The sheriff's office, on the other hand, is located in the west part of town, meaning that it is farther west of the prime meridian. So if you figured this out, then congratulations, you have a solid understanding of the geographic coordinate system. Let's try this second conversion exercise. Convert 45 degrees, 50 minutes, 20 seconds, to the decimal degree format. Pause the video and give it a whirl. If you came up with 45.83888, you're right on. If not, try it again. Let's try one last one. Convert 45.2158 degrees to the degree, minute, second format. The answer is 45 degrees, 12 minutes, 57 seconds. Did you get the right answer? If not, try it again. A few words about using the geographic coordinate system. Although it is quite precise and used by our modern GPS units, the National Grid System, aka the Military Grid Reference System, is still the preferred location system for SAR and disasters. That is because of the complexity of latitude and longitude systems. Consider an actual event on a mission in which I was recently involved. We were trying to locate a victim and were given a lat lawn by our dispatcher over a very weak comlink that sounded like 45 degrees 00 dot 36 north 118 degrees 38.06 west. So was this 45 degrees 00 point 36 minutes or was it 45 degrees 00 minutes and 36 seconds? And 118 degrees 38 point 06 minutes or minus 118 degrees 38 minutes 06 seconds? The different locations are displayed on the map. Since this coordinate was coming third hand relayed by the wife of the victim to our dispatcher, there was a great deal of concern with this figure. It turned out to indeed be degrees decimal minutes, but nevertheless I was worried as we hiked our way into the wilderness area looking for this gentleman. 
I have received mistaken coordinates in the past with this same issue, and I have learned that most people, even searchers, do not understand the geographic coordinate system as well as they think they do. So always remember that when the decimal is less than 60 on both figures, confirmation of the format should always be requested. So this concludes our session on latitude and longitude. I hope we've answered most of your questions. If not, there's a wealth of information on the internet and the SAR manuals. So I wish you the best. Be safe out there and thank you for your service in search and rescue.